Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. So my wear the lighting is super janky and the sun is doing weird things and I don't know if it's gonna get any better but hopefully this is all right for you guys. Um, uh, today I'm doing my December wrap up which is a bit delayed because I have been ill sadly the last week and a half or so and um, I've been unable to film but I'm finally doing my December wrap up. December was a pretty good reading month for me. In total I read 23 books which is amazing and then I hit my goal of 200 for the year which I wasn't expecting to do. And in terms of ratings I had one book that I DNF'd and I had two books that I didn't rate. The two books I didn't rate were Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows because I would just rate all Harry Potter books five stars. Um, and the other one was Identity Crisis by Ben Elton which I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Basically I just didn't know what to make of that book. The DNF was Blanca y Roja, which I already talked about as well in my mid-month wrap-up. And um, apart from that, my other ratings, I had four 2.5 star books, two 3 star books, three 3.5 star books, three 4 star books, five 4.5 star books, and two 5 star books, which is really good. Um, that's a lot of almost 5 star books. So I will start going through them. So unfortunately we have to start with a couple of negatives and a couple of negative arcs, which I always hate doing. The first one is The Secret Santa by Trish Hartenew. Hartenew. Um, this I gave 2.5 stars to. This is a thriller about there is a party and it's like a PR party so the celebrity is going to it. And everyone brings these gifts to the party and they're all employees and they all work together and they basically can take a gift and then swap it afterwards i think it's called a white elephant and i think this book was originally called white elephant it was presumably changed to secret santa because it's more well known i'm not really sure um but anyway so they have this party and then one of these gifts is a murder weapon which has been used in a murder by one of the characters and that's all I'm going to say, that's all the blurb says. The main problem with this book is none of that happens until like 75% of the way through. Like I'll post my full review down below and all my ARC books will have full reviews which will be linked in the description. But literally 70% of the way through they're still opening presents at this party and you're just like what is the point? Um, the writing was okay, the characters were passable, but it just took way too long to get to the actual point of the book. If they'd open the presents right at the start, then the book would be far more interesting because it would cover all kind of the aspects of, you know, the ramifications of opening a murder weapon and being at a party and someone knows you're a murderer. They just don't do that. So yeah, it was just such a, a, a meh book. Um, maybe read it if you want like a seasonal thriller, but even then, I think there's probably better examples of that, so yeah, sadly I can't recommend this one. The next book was another arc I gave 2.5 stars to, and that is Midwinter Mysteries. This is a collection of short stories, all by different authors. Um, I wanted to like this way more than I did, and basically I think it, the idea is fantastic. It's basically a bunch of authors from this um, publishing house of writing short stories set in the winter time using their characters so it's like a really quick introduction to a whole bunch of detective books and you, I guess the idea is you read them and you can pick up any of the books if you're interested in the stories unfortunately they didn't do a great job of setting up the characters in most cases which would be fine if this wasn't the intention to like kind of hook you in um a lot of the stories were kind of meh they didn't really have either great resolutions or they didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I really liked the idea behind this and I didn't want to be too harsh on it. Um, a lot of them were police procedural detective stories as well, like more modern day, which I'm not actually that into. So maybe if you are into those, you might enjoy this more than I did. Um, but yeah, I just, it's quite forgettable. I don't really remember much about it now, to be honest. Thankfully, it's mostly uphill from here. We have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Um, obviously not writing this, I won't say too much about it because I've got quite a lot of books to go through. I loved it, of course I loved it, it was really great rereading these, I listened to them all on audiobook, I reread them at the Time Turner Book Club. Yeah, Deathly Hallows is so good, it's a really great end to the series. Um, 
it's not perfect but really good and yeah that's all I'm gonna say about that the next book really was a lovely surprise and that was At the Edge of the Universe by Sean David Hutchinson so this was a 4.5 star for me this is like a sci-fi contemporary I guess is the best description and it's about our main character who um had a best friend who became his boyfriend and then he just doesn't exist anymore and no one remembers him existing and the universe is also literally shrinking so space just keeps getting smaller and he's the only one who can remember that things aren't as they used to be and apart from that it's kind of just a contemporary I don't really want to say anything more about the plot because I was fairly blind going in I didn't realize what it was doing and I think that works well but yeah, I just was really into the story. It was beautifully written. It was really cool. I had no idea what was going on in a really great way. I was really interested to find out what was going on. And I liked the characters. Yeah, it was really, really enjoyable. I'm so glad I read it. And I'm definitely going to read more of Sean David Hutchison's books pretty soon because I feel like they all have the same kind of vibe. And I really liked that vibe. So very, very happy that I took the chance on this book. Next we have the 12 Doctors of Christmas. Uh, this I listened to an audiobook, I got it from my local library. This is basically 12 short stories, one about each of the Doctors from Doctor Who, all Christmas themed. I actually really enjoyed this, I gave this four stars. Um, I listened to the, just the generic 12 stories and I didn't actually get all the way through that one because I just wasn't that interested in the stories. These stories were a lot better, I really liked the theme of a lot of them. It brought back some really great villains and other things. Um, the one that sticks out to me is the Ninth Doctor one, so if you've watched Doctor Who you remember that, um, well if you've obsessively watched Doctor Who like I have, you might remember that the Ninth Doctor says to Rose at one point, who says I'm not Santa Claus, bred by school when you're 12, um, something along those lines and then one of the stories is about that and that was definitely my favourite story, I really really enjoyed that. Yeah, this was really good. It got me in the Christmassy mood. Um, I enjoyed it far more than I thought I would. I definitely recommend it if you're a Doctor Who fan. I think this is way better than the 12 normal stories. And I've not read the Halloween or the spooky Tales of Terror yet. So I'll see where it fits in my rankings when I do. But yeah, really enjoyed this. Next book. Oh. How do you like me now? Holly Bourne. I read this, I buddy read this with um, Nicole from Beautiful Chaos of Books and Victoria from What Victoria Read. I will link both their channels down below, I love them both, please go check them out, they're just like the nicest people and their content is fantastic as well. This is an adult contemporary about this woman called Tori and she published a book when she was in her 20s about being in your 20s and how you, no one knows what life is about and she ended that book um having met this guy so years later now she's in her 30s and she's still dating the guy and things are not going well um it's basically just about her relationship and her life and her kind of crisis dealing with trying to write a follow-up book when her life isn't what she wants it to be this book broke my heart i gave it 4.5 stars um it's just so good. I can't really say too much about it, but it perfectly captures what it's like to be in a relationship that is fundamentally a terrible relationship, but it's not bad enough for you to just leave. And the way Holly Bourne captured that is just perfect. Um, I will link my Goodreads shelf, like the quotes that I highlighted as I went along, I'll link that down below. Um, some of them will have spoilers but I'll mark them as spoilers if they do but basically yeah I just I've never related so much to a book I'm I'm, I'm not in my 30s um, but my previous relationship was scarily like the relationship in this book and I think a lot of people will have had a relationship like this and it's just like oh it was just amazing she captured it perfectly as an author I'm in love with her writing, I'm definitely going to read all of her other books, which is great because I already bought all of her other books, so I'm really glad that I do actually like them. And yeah, I just, uh, 
I don't think there's any specific trigger warnings, but it might stir up some emotions if you've had that kind of relationship in the past. It certainly did in me, not in a bad way, but in a kind of like, oh wow, kind of way. So yeah, I just, I loved it. It was amazing buddy reading it as well. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, go check out Hollyborn if you've not, because I'm not even a big contemporary fan and I loved her work. So you should definitely read it. Next book I read was also Buddy Read, and that is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. I buddy read this with Sasha from More Red and Half Dead. Again, wonderful person, absolutely great content. Go check her out, I will link it down below. Um, this I gave three stars to. It was okay. It's a, it's a fantasy book. Um, it's a dystopian book, which I didn't realise going in, and that was quite cool. So it's set in the future, and global warming has kind of overtaken the earth. And there's a bunch of monsters roaming around the earth and our main character hunts these monsters. And then there was a specific plot which I've forgotten um, that she's trying to do something and she teams up with this guy who's the son of one of her oldest friends, like literally old. Um, he's like one of the... Um, oldest people in the village kind of thing and I did really like it um I didn't love it there was something about it that just stopped me loving it and I'm not quite sure what it was the characters were fine I really liked some of their interactions I quite liked the main character there was some cool stuff going on with her but it was just something that was kind of keeping me at a distance as a reader and it stopped me loving it and it was really a shame um I don't know if I'll be continuing on with the series because it is a series, I probably won't. But yeah, there were some elements I really liked and there was some elements that were just kind of meh. And yeah, I wish, I wish I'd wish i loved this more, but I didn't. <laughs> the next book is Paperback Crush. Um, this is a non-fiction book. This is by Gabrielle Moss. Yes, Gabrielle Moss. This is incredible, gave this five stars. Um, this is about fiction aimed at young girls. So I guess, middle grade to young adult and how it changed between certain decades I think it's like the 80s and 90s yeah 80s and 90s but this was so well written it was really really interesting to me um it kind of it covers all like the babysitter club stuff it covers point horror which is really cool because I wasn't expecting it to cover that because I mean it makes it pretty clear from the cover it's like girly girly fiction and I love that it actually went into that and it established that there was a point where all these girls were reading Point Horror and other similar creepy books. It was just fascinating to read about the trends, um, what was popular at the time in the social context and it was really really cool. I learned so much, there were so many interesting things. It's got about like the first gay book ever published aimed at children here and the ramifications of that. It's got some stuff about um, race and authors of colour and that kind of thing. Yeah, I just really really loved it. If, you sound, if you're even vaguely interested in the premise I would definitely pick it up if you can because it was such an entertaining read. It's like, it's not only a topic I'm really interested in but it was written in such a great way and I just want the author to write more non-fiction books because her style was so good and I feel like anything she writes would be really interesting. So yeah, that was definitely a win for me. I loved it. So the next book I read was another audiobook for my library and that was Mythos by Stephen Fry. You might remember I raved about Heroes. Um, I think it was the first half of December or maybe November that I listened to that. This is the, actually the first book, but they're not really um, chronological as such. They're retelling of the Greek myths, so you can listen to them independently or read them independently. This one I actually liked a lot less. I gave it four stars out of five. I gave the other one five. Um, and I only really gave it four stars, to be honest, because I wanted to rate it low and I felt that wasn't fair because it's not actually worse in any way. I was just less interested in the content. So I gave it four stars. I don't know why I was less interested in the content. It could be the time of year that I was listening to it. I was kind of reading a lot of other stuff um, and it's quite a long audiobook and I was a bit impatient to finish it to get to the before the end of the year to finish my goals it could have just been the fact that I'm more interested in the people of Greek legend um but yeah I don't know what it was it was still really good and I still definitely recommend it the audiobook's still great still narrated by Stephen Fry and it's got all the great elements from the first book 
but yeah just something about it I don't know what it was I just didn't like it as much as the first as the second one which is a shame but it's still really good next one's a Kindle Unlimited book and it is Twice Upon an Apocalypse by uh oh yeah this is an anthology so this is an anthology of fairy tales with a Lovecraftian twist to them um I gave this 2.5 stars which is probably a little bit unfair of me but I didn't realise quite how Lovecraftian they would be which sounds so stupid but I'm not into Lovecraftian horror I just really liked the idea of like horror fairy tales but so many of these were so strong on Lovecraftian elements that I feel if you don't know anything about Lovecraft or even if like I have a passing knowledge of Lovecraft for example but even that wasn't really enough for me to understand the story so I probably shouldn't read this in hindsight and I'm probably being a little bit harsh on it but if you're into Lovecraft I would definitely recommend reading it however there was just too much going on in the stories that either it wasn't really to do with the original story which seems a shame because then like the fairy tale element is lost or it just veered so heavily into Lovecraftian that I just it might as well be meaningless and um, the other thing as well which I think doesn't matter or I think matters regardless of how much of a Lovecraftian fan you are they were quite repetitive to me like I read the first four and they all kind of had a similar ending and I don't know if there's just not that much Lovecraftian horror elements to draw from or if they just decided to put it so all the same elements were together but either way it just read a bit repetitively to me so yeah that was a shame I want a more horror like generic horror fairy tale retelling thing so if you know of any of those let me know what they are because I will happily read those next we have another audiobook from the library and that is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell this is a thriller um I gave it 3.5 stars out of 5 this is about a um See this, I listen to it on audio audiobook which automatically means I don't process the story as well and I really need to stop doing that with my thrillers because I like it as I'm listening to them but then I can never remember them afterwards. I don't know what it is, it's something specific to audiobook. But it's about a couple of different people and a couple of different narratives and you don't quite know at the start how they're all going to play in together. But essentially there was a house Okay, I just looked up the plot so I don't spoil anything that's not in the blurb. But basically, there's a woman called Libby and she is going to have something left to her when she's 25. She's got like a trust, but she doesn't know what it is. And then she gets a letter sent to her and she's been left this house and she finds out her identity. And basically, she comes from this house where... Um, two adults died there and then there was a baby left in the cot and everyone else from this house had vanished when the bodies of the adults were found but someone had still been feeding the baby and that's really all I can say about the plot that was awful um but like I said I really don't remember it that much uh it was good I like Lisa Jewell's writing I always have it's fantastically written I actually liked the mystery quite a lot I got invested into it um I always say when I listen to them as audiobooks I just don't get the same thriller experience so I think I might have enjoyed this way more if I'd read it on paper but I liked the ending it was pretty well written I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in the actual plot if you look it up and not just the random random ramblings that I've said um but yeah that was terrible but you should probably read this book and finally we have a storytelling of ravens this is by rh dixon and this is another kindle unlimited book i thought this was a thriller it's actually a horror book um which is a nice surprise so this is about a group of people who wake up in this house so two of the people are already in this house and two of them wake up kind of at the same time and that's all I can really say. The house is a weird zone. It's like kind of like they're in another dimension, but you don't know what they, you don't know what the answer is basically. But they've just wake up in this house and they're trying to work out what's happened to them. 
yeah, this was. I gave this 2.5 stars out of 5, which is weird because I remembered it more fondly. Like I said, it's about. It's like the 20th of January when I'm filming this, somewhere around that. And I thought I would. I remembered me enjoying it more than that rating would suggest. Um, but I think it was just. I don't remember if it's the writing, I think there were some elements I didn't like. There's definitely some gross stuff in here, like body stuff that's not body horror, just like gross physical descriptions of people which I really can't deal with. Yeah, again, I don't really remember too much about this one, it was alright. I liked that it was horror and I was really invested, I remember being really invested in finding out what was going on, but I think ultimately there was just something weird about the characters or the plot or something that didn't quite gel with me that made me give it 2.5 stars but it was a cool idea um, and I love reading kind of unlimited horror because it kind of you find some real gems there so yeah so that is my December wrap-up I'm sorry the last few books were pretty poor uh, summaries and wrap-ups and my next wrap-ups will go up much speedier it's just it's the time of year where I have like a thousand videos to film and no time to actually film them but yeah hopefully that was somewhat useful to you thank you so much for watching this video as always let me know if you've read any of these if you want to read any of them if you want to know any more thoughts or trigger warnings or any of that kind of thing just ask me down below um I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up it helps me out massively and I hope to see you next time